Hi, I'm Ross Overstreet with FLIR Systems, and today I want to talk about getting started with the SC7000 series of high-end infrared cameras. So we'll open the case. First thing we notice is the camera. Let's pull it out. Let's also get the Ethernet cable, the power supply, and the breakout cable that lets us get analog video. That's everything we'll need out of the case to get started. So now that we have everything out on the table, let's take a closer look at the camera. You'll notice this camera has a fixed optic on the front, but it can be removed by twisting the barrel here. We also have a different face plate that allows you to use any legacy Janos optics you may have laying around for other cameras. Let's spin it around and take a look at the back. We have the power connector on the bottom, Ethernet cable connector on the side, And this is where we plug in the adapter that allows us to get analog video. At this point we'll turn the camera on. You'll hear the cryo cooler start to operate. This camera's detector operates at liquid nitrogen temperature, which is 77 Kelvin. We accomplish this with a closed cycle cryo cooler, and it takes about 5 to 7 minutes to cool down. And at this point, we have to wait a few minutes while the PC assigns an IP address to the camera. Okay, the pop-up dialog box says local area connection. This connection has limited or no connectivity. This is just a sign that it's now communicating with the camera instead of the internet that it expects. At this point, you can close the window and launch examiner software. So here we see examiner launch. The first thing that it does is go out and scan for any attached devices. In this case, we see a virtual camera uh, that's in here for some of the products that we sell from our ATSF division. And we'll see uh, our first image appear. So at this point, we have a great image. So for the next part in the series, please see the examiner max getting started video. Thank you. For further information, please contact FLIR Systems.